so in the both rigid and the strain we are we have to we, what are the things we need to do so what are the conditions we need to specify first uh, we have to look into so let's first talk about the rigid bus bar then we will follow to the, we will go to the strain bus bar calculation rigid bus bar sizing calculation generally uh, we have to know 10 factors which are general considerations when you are designing this rigid bus bar what are this first one is where the bus location is coming where the bus location is coming if you recall our single lane diagram at 33 kv we are having two buses and 220 kv single bus and uh, and again for the double bus bar again we are having two buses so this some bus location you have to fix and also you have to know if there is a chance of future expansion of your substation now at present we are having 10 33 kv feeders maybe tomorrow if some uh, addition of uh, bay extension may be uh, may come uh, addition of two bays so you have to extend that rigid bus so before uh, designing this rigid just uh, consider that whether there is a future expansion of the expansion is there or not that is the second thing and the third one is you have to select the conductor the conductor here for the rigid is aluminum pipe and for the strain it is a this what a bare conductor or icsr conductor or a triple ac conductor a general a bare conductor for strain how to select the conductor for the strain that we discussed in our conductor session how to size the aluminum pipe that we are discussing now and apart from this in the rigid we are having uh, one more important one is short circuit conditions we have to calculate the short circuit conditions because the the aluminum pipes the r phase y phase and b phase or placing to each uh, between the spacing will be there but maybe due to the any fault occur in one of the phase the magnitude of the current flowing in that phase will be high and remaining other will be low so there might be a chances of force of attraction or repulsion between these two conductors and this will may lead to, may affect on the support structures of your uh, rigid bus bar so generally here we are calculating the short circuit forces to conclude the what is the uh, support spacing to be provided minimum support spacing to be provided and also what is what is the cantilever strength that to be maintained for the supports and also deflection factor for that so for this suppose let's see in a simple way i am having a uh, i am selecting a table team so uh, i am uh, selecting a table for my for uh, my personal purpose so when i am choosing the table i have to ensure that this table should support some load what is the load suppose i have to think for what purpose i am using this table suppose if i am purchasing the table for my uh, system purpose so what would be there a cpu will be there a system will be there a keyboard speakers and uh, other some uh, load so these are some loads i will consider and i will ask that manufacturer whether my this table can capable to handle the system weight the computer system total system weight so accordingly he will give me he will suggest me the uh, table so similarly here also the conductor this is the rigid bus bar this rigid bus bar should be mounted on some supports right so i have to uh, i have to uh, no i have to uh, calculate what is the spacing between the two structures to be maintained minimum spacing and what is the weight on the structures so how can i know this if you know the load acting on this then only you will come to know this so what are the loads on this obviously one is a short circuit force 
and other one is if your system if your project is uh, prone to the uh, ice loading or wind loading so that also one more uh, factor load conditions you have to consider